in the love of Jesus. How are we doing today? Good. All right. Happy Father's Day. Awesome time, right? Thank, Thank you, you, brother. <laughs> Happy Father's hey, Day, uh, So before we start on announcements, uh, we have one, uh, or the first order of business is we have a birthday man somewhere. Brother Ephraim. Hey. So we're going to sing happy birthday, happy okay? Happy birthday. Happy birthday, One, old man. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ephraim. Happy birthday to you. Ciao, ciao, ciao. All right. <laughs> Are anyone else who has a birthday in, in June as well? Okay, if this is your, uh, your first time joining us or if, this is, uh, if you're a newcomer, we want to welcome you to LHCC. Thank you for joining us today, especially on Father's Day. And then that's, that's another thing, happy Father's Day uh, to, to all the fathers. Um, if you've been coming to uh, LHCC for a little bit and uh, you like to become a voting member of the church, then you can pick up uh, an application after service at the hospitality desk, okay, right outside the middle doors. If you just go over there and just ask uh, really any of the ushers, the greeters, um, they can go ahead and get you that, that packet. It's, it's, it's important if you've been coming to the church um, to, to fill out an application to be a member because you can come to service every Sunday, but in order to have a vote on something, you have to be a member, okay? So... Uh, that's, that's an important thing to do uh, for, uh, for us, but again, you can pick that up, and then you can just return it to an usher or to Sister Eva, okay? Um, we asked, I know that, um, that uh, tithing is already done, but for next week, we ask that you, you don't seal the tithing envelope. Um, there's a lot of envelopes to go through, so it just makes it a little bit easier for them to be able to just open it up. So please don't seal the envelopes, um, but please make sure to put your name and your, your address and all that information on there, okay? Um, that way we can make sure to put that into the system, and then come at the end of the year, you can get your, your tithing slip, okay? Make sure that everything's correct. Um, we ask that if there's any guests that need to hear the in-ear uh, in -ear translation, you can go see Brother Foley in the back at the sound booth. And um, he'll get you the, the headset, and then we'll get you uh, the service in Spanish. Um, if you look around, we're a little decorated, okay? Uh, I decorated the state. No, I'm just joking. No, <laughs> um, 
we're, we're all set up for VBS. We just did our third day of VBS. If you're not uh, aware, we're doing VBS every Saturday this month. It's five days long, and so June just worked out perfectly. There's five, five Saturdays in June. So we decided to do that, and, um, you know, we have some decorations over here off to the side. We had to make some room for... We got uh, snakes, we got turtles, we got elephants. We got everything that you need. Uh, if you look at Rock our website... <laughs> if you look at our website and you go to the sermons, it's funny because it's framed with pastor and a giant elephant behind him. People on the internet are probably saying, <laughs> what is going on over yeah. there? We're very into nature here at LHCC. Um, but uh, you can still register your child or a nephew, niece, grand, uh, grandchild for VBS uh, up until the last day. It doesn't matter. Uh, to register, you can come see me. I have paper uh, registrations, if that's what your style. Um, but you can also go to our website, and, uh, and you can, um, there's a thing that says VBS on it. You click on that, and you can register on there as well. Um, but VBS is from uh, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., okay? Um, one of the, well, actually, before I get to the last part, Pastor. So, I know last week I said that we were going to start building uh, a little addition, and if, and if you remember, I asked for some money, which I hate doing, but I asked for some money for the, for no, the revamp. He no, he doesn't. <laughs> but uh, I, we got the funds that we needed. Um, I was unable to start the building process because I just had surgery, and uh, it took a few people to convince me to not do it, so... We didn't do it. But we're going to be doing it on Saturday. So if you're wanting to help out with that, it's going to be a small building project. If you're wanting to help, um, just uh, get a hold of me, and then we'll get, we're going to be doing it this Saturday, okay? Um, and then last but not least, we ask that everyone please keep the church leadership in prayer every day at 12 p.m. I say it every single time I come up here and I give announcements, but if you think that you're under attack in your daily life, you can only imagine what the leadership of the church is up against every single day. Um, uh, as, as we all know, if you cut the head off the snake, then the rest of the body dies. Well, if Satan can try to get a hold of our pastor, then we're going to be in some pretty rough shape. And so we need to make sure that every single day we come together as a church, as a bo as body of Christ, and plead the blood of Jesus over our pastor Amen. and put a hedge thank of protection you. over him. Okay, so thank you guys very much. God bless you. I hope you guys enjoy the service. And we gotta keep Adam in prayer because he's got an owie. I won't say where, but he's got a pretty big owie. So, and he showed it to me. So, I know it's there. Keep him in prayer. Praise the Lord. God is good. If you have a Bible, turn with me to the book of Psalms 112. For those that are joining us through the internet and are wondering, what is all this about? This is Vacation Bible School. And so we have crocodiles, we have turtles, we have elephants, we got rivers. The whole church for the Bible school this, this month only. So this is why you see these things today. Praise the Lord. If you have a, a Bible in Psalms 112, we begin to see that it's Father's Day. And I want to acknowledge the fathers today and ask that God's eternal blessing would be upon you. And that we would realize the responsibilities that we have as fathers. Even when our children are not our biological children. There is still a responsibility to each and every one of us that we have the opportunity to express the love of God and show our children, those by marriage or however, that not biological, but you love them the way God gives them to you as your own. And that is a blessing of recognizing the children. And so the Bible tells us, praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who finds great delight in his commandments, that finds delight in worshiping the Lord and finding the blessings of God. And I pray that this morning, for some of you that have lost your fathers, the nostalgia of looking back at the sea of memories 
of being raised, the affection, the love. And sometimes it's hard because we come out of dysfunctional homes and it's difficult to find that feeling inside of you. But recognize that the Lord God loves you and he's our heavenly father. So we can say happy Father's Day to him as well. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to the Lord. Also, I want to acknowledge before I go any further, to all the mothers, to all the mothers that have raised their children and been father and mother to their children. Amen. That is a hard task of being father and mother to their children. I say God bless them. I pray that God would give them a double portion of his presence and blessings on them because I know the task is difficult. And so as we look at the fact that this man delights in the commandments of God, verse 2, his children will be mighty in the land and the generations of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. What a promise the Lord gives us. So we as fathers have to understand and learn as fathers to invest for the future, to invest our time with our children, learning about them, surrounding them with love and protection, Letting them know that we are there no matter what. Investing our time. It's a beautiful thing. Because the dividends are so beautiful as you get older. Your children will never forget you. Even those that are not biological will love you for spending time. Will love you for giving them glory. For being there for them. It is a blessing. So we need to capture the time that God will reveal his will and his purpose to those who are willing to obey him as fathers that we can understand the glory of God, the blessings of the Lord, and obey the commandments of God. In Ephesians chapter 6, it says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Don't make them angry. Don't make them frustrated. Don't make them be rebellious against you. But help them to see the love and the care that you have for each and every one of them. How you want them to prosper. How you want them to excel. How you want them to find that place in their life that's going to be a blessing for them. That they can be able to see all the, the future before them that they can do whatever they please because God will bless them if they only settle down and begin to see what God wants to do. Capturing the moment because of the commandments of God. We as fathers need to walk with God so that we can understand the plan of God for our lives and be committed to him. Sold out to Jesus that God will help us to understand this journey that we're on as fathers, to be leaders, those that guide and instruct and make the right decisions and helping our children in a time of need. Today, our children are under so much pressure as you look at them today in this world. The, the problems that exist around them, the peer pressure that they're under constantly dealing with things that are there trying to force them to go back into the world. The church is hurting because we're not doing what God has called us to do. They see a double standard in us. And because they see a double standard, they don't take God serious. And so they're back into the world. And they'll come to church once in a while and believe that that's enough. But they never find their calling in God. They never reach their potential and find the purpose that God wants for each and every one of them. That's why it's so important that we surrender and yield to God and ask him to lead us and guide us so that we can reflect that life on our children. And they can rise up and be blessed 
because I can't give my children something that I don't have. I have to learn. I have to be taught. I have to be tutored by the Holy Spirit that God will give me wisdom and discernment and how do I deal with the issues that are at hand so my children will be blessed and I can understand the future. One of the hardest things for parents is to see their children incarcerated in drugs as a homeless, not knowing what is going on because we failed them. We failed them in so many ways. Instead of bringing them to that place where they understand and respect and reverence God. Because we're walking with God. And we're committed to Him. And they could see the devotion of God within your lives. As you heard the old adage, monkey see, monkey do. Whatever we do, they're going to follow. Especially if you're raising them up at a tender age, they're going to follow you. And they're going to be committed. And they're going to be good family members as the family covers them with their, with their love and their devotion. That is a blessing. I look at my family today. I mean, all of them, aunts and uncles and cousins and siblings, they're all in Puerto Rico. They're over there as my granddaughter, my oldest granddaughter, is graduating from college tomorrow. She's, she's getting her degree. She went there, went to college. And tomorrow she gets her degree, and all the family, aunts and uncles and cousins, everyone went to Puerto Rico to support her. That's the way it should be, that we are supportive with one another. Raising our children is not an easy task. It's one thing that any man can be a father. Any man can be a father. But it takes a special man to be a dad. That dad that stands in the gap, I love you with an everlasting love. No matter what, raising children can be challenging because it interferes into our lives, into our itinerary of the things that we want to do, the goals that we have, the things that we want to accomplish, the things I want to achieve in my life. And sometimes it becomes very challenging at times, but it's also one of the greatest, greatest privileges that we have on this earth to be a father, to raise your children, to find that they become your best friend, to love them, surround them with that love. And you always hear me say with that expression, affection and love and kisses to your children is never out of style, never. You always want to show that affection to them and love them. It's a privilege to have a personal relationship that you can experience and how you make the most out of it. It's up to you. I don't want to be in, at home at 2, 3 in the morning and hear that my child's arrested or that my child has been in a horrible accident because of drugs. I don't want to hear these kind of stories. It is something that hurts the heart. Something went wrong. We have to learn how to raise them and love them and show them no matter what because they're important. They will carry on what you started. If you give them the opportunity, they will carry on the love and support that God wants to give them. It's a privilege for that person to experience how we can make the most, and how we can change the life of that child. That's a blessing to see the relationship that can build. Sometimes those of you that are not biological parents and you have children that are biological, sometimes those that are not biological respect you and love you more than those that are of your blood. It's amazing. Why? Because there's gratitude, there is love, there is respect. As you grow up and begin to acknowledge the blessings that have been bestowed upon you for someone that has loved you with an everlasting love, 
It's an awesome feeling and an awesome responsibility that we have so that we can bring blessings and encouragement upon our children. That they can look at life and say, I can conquer it. I'm not going to be sad. I'm not going to be frustrated. I'm not going to be suicidal. But I'm going to walk in the blessings of the Lord. I'm not going to allow the world to infect me. I'm going to be a leader, not a follower. That's a blessing. Your grandchildren, to see them, it's a really blessing and a joy to see what God can do. This year, I'll be a great-grandpa. Not just a grandfather, but a great-grandpa. And it's about time, hallelujah. But it's a blessing to see those children and the offspring that you have. And that's a blessing for so many fathers that don't understand the commitment, the responsibility that lies before you. You see, God wants you to rise up and be a hero to your children. Not the drug dealer. Not the porn star. Not the movie star. But that you become the hero for your children. If they want to follow, and follow you and model themselves after you because of their love for you. That they will grow and say, I want to be different. I saw something in my father. I seen him worship the Lord. I seen him get on his face. I seen him be reverence. I was able to see his life that was transparent and how God used him and how God blessed him. He wasn't one way at home and one way at the church. I laugh at times when I see fathers and the family coming up the driveway and you see the father, knock it off. I told you I better stop. I'm going to knock you off when I get you. You better stop me. See you. Hey, pastor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You weren't praising the Lord right now. We have to be careful because they're seeing all that. Then we go home and we don't use the language of God. And scripture, we use a colorful language that's not edifying. And they look and they're your greatest critics. They're looking at you talking to one another without any respect. Using foul language. And then at church we come and, oh, hallelujah. They go, uh-uh, I don't want to be like that. That's why we leave an etching on our children. You see, the big picture is to train up a child in the way that they should go. And when you train them up in the way that they should go, they will never depart from the glory of God. They will never leave. What you instilled and what you invested in them. They will know and hold that secure. And that is greater. They can always rely and fall back on that strength of what they've seen and what worked for you. They know it will work for them. If you give them the tools to be able to understand who God is, what God wants for them, what God can do in their lives, and God will bless them as he's blessed you. If you only surrender and submit your life to Jesus. Amen? Amen? That's why the Bible says, train up in the Proverbs a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he'll never, he may stray a little bit, but he'll never depart because he knows that the power is there. Manasseh was a great example. Manasseh was a wicked man. Manasseh was the youngest ruling king of Israel. Manasseh did everything that was evil in the sight of God. Totally against everything that God stood for. Hezekiah, his father, was a good man. A man of upstanding nature and love. Hezekiah was going to die. And the Lord called him and sent Isaiah and said, Get him ready because, and tell him that he's going to pass away. And Hezekiah said, Lord God, I have no children. I have nothing. And Hezekiah put his face to the wall and began to pray and ask God to give him more time. And the Lord sent Isaiah back. He says, the Lord's going to give you more time. And because he's going to bless you, he's going to give you a child. And God gave Hezekiah Manasseh. And Manasseh was wicked and evil in the sight of God. 
He began to worship the zodiac, the comets. He began to worship all the evil things and even put pornography figures in the temple of God. Manasseh was evil. Isaiah went to share with him. He said, Manasseh, stop. And he was defiant, defiant against the Lord. And then finally the Lord said, that's it, Manasseh. If you go back in the history and you go back and you look at the ancient writings, you see that Manasseh, when Isaiah was sent to him, he took Isaiah and stretched him out and cut him in half. He says, here, here, Lord, I'm sending him back to you in two pieces. And the Lord said, that's it, Manasseh. That is it. I'm sick and tired of what you're doing. I've given you plenty of chances. And so the Lord took Manasseh, and he allowed the enemies of the land to come and capture him. And they put a hook in his nose, and they led him like an animal into captivity. And as Manasseh was waiting there to be sentenced to see what the enemies of the Lord were going to do against him, he began to pray. He began to understand. He didn't pray to the zodiac. He didn't pray to the comets. He didn't pray to the soothsayers. He didn't pray to the witchcraft. He didn't pray to all these things that were an abomination to God. He began to pray to the God of his father. And the Lord, the Lord's mercy heard Manasseh. And God established Manasseh once again because he called on the name of the Lord. And God blessed him. And Manasseh was restored for the glory of God because God gave him a second chance. Even though your children may stray, if you instill the word of God, the Holy Spirit is always convicting and the Holy Spirit is always challenging them. So as we see, train our children in the way that they should go and when they are old, they'll never ever depart because they will know the truth. And the truth will set them free. Even when they are old, they won't depart. The glory of God. Proverbs 22 verse 6 tells us that. This verse tells us that there is two big gifts that we're to give our children. Roots and wings. And if we want our children to succeed, we allow them to fly. We allow them to make mistakes. But all the while, being around them, to bless them, to encourage them. Understand that all of us make mistakes, and all of us have skeletons in our closet, that we wish we could have done things different, that we didn't use wisdom at times when we should have. That's why the Bible says children are a heritage of the Lord. They're a blessing from God. Such is the kingdom of heaven to the children, that we would become like little children. The children are a blessing that God loans to you, that God gives you as a loan. Your children help you. Your children encourage you. As I dedicate the babies up here, and I said, look at this beautiful little bundle of joy and of love. One day, this child, will turn back and protect you. One day this child will tell you, don't go outside, it's too cold, put a sweater on. Watch your step, you're going to fall. How it reverses. Like the psalmist says, that the warrior that has his quivers full of arrows, that he pulls out an arrow and he launches it out into the future. That's your child. That he's launching them out to pave the way for you and me, that when we get older, there's someone there to take care of you. Someone there to watch over you. You know what's one of the saddest things that I've ever, ever experienced? One of the things that have left an etching in my life was pain and sorrow. When I've gone to do eulogies, I've been asked, or they call, and say, Pastor, we need a, a minister. Or the mortuary will call me, Pastor, can you come and do a eulogy for these people? I don't know them from Adam. 
lest I go. And I said, okay, I'll go do it. And I'll go there. And I'll see them as the service starts. And there's no one there. There's no siblings. There's no family members, aunts and uncles and cousins. And there's no children. Just one, at times, one broken man, the husband. But no one else. It is the hardest thing to do a eulogy where no one is there. That's why we must invest for our children that one day they'll be there for you, to help you, to bless you. And as I shared yesterday, we had Mario's funeral. There's only two things that you can take to heaven. That's the love of God and the love of your family. And that ushers you right into the glory of God. That's all we have. And when you look at the support that your children can give you because you've invested in them, high dividends that are going to pay back, that one day they're going to look at you and they're going to say, that's my father. And they're going to moan and cry and sulk over you because of your time, because of your commitment, because of your love. Because you never showed them hatred and anger, you're not mine. You were always there to love them, to take care of them. And that is the blessing of the Lord, how God can take you and bless you. That's why our children are loaned to us for a time and a season. As God begins to uplift them, it's a heritage our children are loaned to us as parents to see the responsibility that we have. What are we going to do with them? How are we going to nurture them? How are we going to bless them? How are we going to lead them? That's why when I bring the parents up here and I said, do you pledge in front of the people that are here and the angels in heaven and God do you pledge to raise this child in the ways that they should go with a godly heritage? Do you pledge to share the gospel with them? Because we don't baptize babies until they're old enough to make a decision of their own. But it's a time to dedicate them to God, for God to put a hedge of angels around them and bless them until they're old enough to make a decision for themselves, where they're old enough to make an accountability for themselves. That is important that they will learn the responsibility that is there. For so many of us, we don't understand that. We grow up in dysfunctional homes, and what we see in the dysfunctional way is what we give. All of us have heard the term, es un padastro. He's your stepfather. No, you are a father. And God has given you those children for a time and a season to express and to show God's love and God's mercy and God's goodness and help them to understand that they're not alone. They're bruised and hurt enough without their biological fathers that abandon them. But you can make an inspiration in their life and they will rise. And they will rise one day and call you blessed and acknowledge you, and love you, and weep over you, and follow you, because you invest. You invest. You cannot, fathers, and you're looking by the internet, you cannot reap what you haven't sown. You cannot ask for God's blessing to shower you when you have not given to your children. It is important that we're able to give to them because they're just loaned to you. To understand the skills that God gives us as parents and grandparents and grandfathers to our children, that we show them the way of God 
I can leave them with all kinds of money, but if they don't know Jesus, I've left them poor. So much can be so little. And so little can be so much when you have Jesus in it. That's the blessing of knowing the Lord. Parents are the children's most beautiful thing that we have that comes from the Lord since we look at them as a gift from God. Not a liability, but a gift from God to love them, to cherish them, to bless them. No one recognizing the gift that God has given us from the Lord. And so that way, most parents go, instead of teaching them the spiritual side of the things of God, we go by the human nature. The human nature within ourselves has restrictions. We don't know how to yield, how to forgive. It's all by merits. Do right. Or I'm against you. We don't have no grace to love and to bless. You take a child that you try to train him how to play baseball as a father. When he hits a home run, you take him out and buy him the best ice cream. Buy him whatever he wants. But when he strikes out, could you see it? Did you understand what was going on? And you take him home. You give him a low self-esteem. You don't give him courage. And even when he strikes out, finding his way, finding who he is within himself, that you take him and buy him the same thing as though he hit a home run. He will thank you for that, that you didn't criticize him, that you didn't belittle him. But the next time he gets up there because you belittled him, He's so scared to hit that ball because of what you told him and what he couldn't accomplish. Instead of saying, my daddy's fair whether I win or lose, and I'm going to do the best that I can. Fairness. Fairness. You're instilling in them the blessings, structure, obedience, guidance, love, and grace. You're instilling in them something that they can grow and be blessed. Because you spend that time and you don't treat them any different. Whether win, lose, or draw, you're there. He's a champion. He's great. And that builds his moral character. That builds his confidence. And next time he comes out, he's going to hit the home run. But you've got to know how to, how to love him into that. Not just in the... Say, well, when you do good and you bring me a report card with nothing but A's, I'll take care of you. But if not, you're punished. You need to walk them through. Guide them. Remember, you were there at one time, too. And that's why it's so important that we see, don't always go at the things with your children in the human nature. But develop their skills and ask for godly wisdom to guide and that God would give you the knowledge and the understanding. We as parents need to savor. Listen to what I'm telling you. We need to savor the moment of our children growing. So many of us fathers think, I'm the provider. I'm the one that lays down the law. I put a roof over your head. There's a refrigerator with food. But there's no love. There's no compassion. There's no understanding. Instead of saying, I want to spend time with you. I want to love you. I want to show you. I want to embrace you. I want to kiss you. You're my child. And show them what it is to find favor in their dad. They don't want all the stuff that we have, all the modern stuff that we have today. They want your attention. That's the greatest thing that they can have is a father that cares and helps them and tell them, come on, let's pray. Let's go to church. Before we start, let's pray that God will bless this. Bless this time. It's never out of style. My kids travel around the world. They'll come for the blessing before they leave. 
They know that I'm there. Dad, I'm going here. Let me bless you in the name of Jesus. Papa, I'm going over here. Let me bless you in the name of Jesus. They need that because it's moral support for them to understand. So we need to savor and enjoy the time that we have together. Because our children will grow so fast. And if we're not careful from G.I. Joe, they'll end up in prison. How did that happen? What happened? We were too busy with our own lives. And we never spent time with them as they were growing up. We never felt the sticky kisses with candy and them showing affection. We never felt that goodness of them. Next thing we know, they're gone. And they're out of your control. And no longer will they listen to you. And yet, we could have spent that time in raising them, enjoying the time, and savoring the time with them. Don't be so overcommitted. Spend time with them. Love them. Be fair. And no matter win, lose, or draw, you're there. You're a champion. You're a champion. You're a champion. And they're going to be a champion. If you only show them that. We need to slow down as parents, especially as a father. Slow down. Go in the bedroom. Talk to your children. Speak to them. Love them. How are you doing? What's going on? Are you okay? Let's pray and ask the Lord that you sleep like a baby tonight. Spend that quality time in nurturing them. There is nothing more greater for a child to feel the affection of a parent and understand that they're loved. So when we become so overcommitted, we don't spend that quality time with them because our life is so wrapped up I want to do this, and I want to do that, and I, 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 I. And our children are left behind. Oh, we go to church, but we don't spend that quality time in teaching them about the Holy Spirit. We don't spend that quality time teaching them the values of God, the principles of God, the understanding, the reverence of the Lord to nurture them. That God will bless them even when you're not there. That God will convict them and watch over them when you're not as you pray over them. There is a reverence. Take someone like Noah, an old man, old in his age, and comes to his son and says, Sons, the Lord told me to build an ark. What are you talking about, an ark? It doesn't rain. Why do we need an ark in the middle of a desert? We need to build an ark because God's going to bring the animals. One of the sons got to come up and say, Dad, you got heat stroke. That sun is beating on your bald head, son. Dad, come on, Dad. But they knew. The father. They understood Noah. And when Noah told them that, they said, let's get ready and start building the ark. They didn't renege. They didn't say, oh, no. Are you sure that's from God? Are you sure that's what God told you? They knew because he had set a principle upon their lives. That they saw his life. They knew the reverence he had for God. They knew that God would speak to him. Like he'll speak to you. That's why it's so important that we understand and not be so overcommitted. But listen to the voice of God. Teaching them how to hear the voice of God. So that they will be strong and understand. That we must give them solid biblical roots and foundation in the Lord. Takes time. But you'll be blessed. Because they'll take care of you. They will watch over you. 
If you ever get a chance, look at the life. And and uh, what's his name? The basketball player. Uh, the big guy. What's his name? Who? Kareem Abdul. No, no, not him, no. Shaquille O'Neal. Look at Shaquille O'Neal. Look at his life. And look at his story. How he was raised by a a non-biological dad. But the relationship and what his father instilled in him and how Shaq grew up to be something special because he had someone that took him in. Even not being a biological father, he embraced him and loved him. And their relationship was tremendous. It's a blessing to see that. Also helping him to understand the ways of God Things that God desires through our Lord Jesus Christ. That he is the Lord God as we pray and seek the Lord. How to walk with God. How to be reverence, Teaching them all these things that God wants to show them the responsibilities. The wings are releasing them with the power and the glory of God. And training them to live a life of righteousness and glory as adults. That they would influence others that are going through a struggle. That God is moving. Someone said, my other Bible's all beat up. Everything's tore up inside. It's falling apart. Someone says, you got a beat up Bible. Yes, I do. But my life isn't. Because I read this. Amen? Amen. This book will keep you from sin. This book will keep you from sin. But sin will keep you from this book. Understand what I just said. That's why it's so important that we understand the Lord. That we understand preparing our hearts. It's important. Understanding the calling of God for each and every one of us as fathers today. In all the world, we must show the basic principles and spiritual blessings that God provides for us. That we can teach them with godly Christian roots. Investing. Investing in those children that are going to come and be grandchildren from them. And they're going to bless you abundantly. You're going to be so overwhelmed with the blessings of God. Amen? Amen. God is good. Amen. Investing your life is never out of style. Loving your children is never out of style. Remember, the future stands before you and your children. Parents, we as we look at this, parents' greatest gift to their children is to show them love and affection and devotion. Notice what he says in verse 3. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Prosperity and not poverty that God will give him. Even in darkness, the light dawns on the upright for the graciousness of God and the compassionate and righteous man. He is assured of the presence of God, that God will illuminate his light. As he walks through the valley of the shadow of death, he fears no evil because God is with him. Good will come to him who is generous and lends freely. Notice, who conducts his affairs with justice. He's stable. He's not afraid to help those that are struggling. He's not afraid to lend the love and understanding. Surely he will never be shaken. Verse 6. A righteous man will be remembered forever. And he will have no fear of bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. The Lord God will establish him. And he will know that he knows that God is with him. And he will trust God no matter what. Even when it doesn't make sense, God is with you. And you have the assurance of the Lord God that he blessed you and honors you 
and uplifts you because of your life. We're free from fear because of God's compassion. His heart is secure, verse 8. And he has no fear. In the end, he will look in triumph on those that are his foes, those that have come against him. His confidence endures even under attack. If God is for you, who can be against you? Blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't need vengeance. The Lord says, vengeance is mine. You let me deal with that individual. Notice he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be lifted high in honor. Lasting fulfillment of honor that God wants to give him. To bless him for who he is. That is the glory. The wicked man will see and be vexed. There's nothing there for him. He will gnash his teeth and waste away. The longing of the wicked will come to nothing. That's why we must endure the envy of the world, the envy of what God is doing with the man that loves the Lord and stands on the scriptures of God. As the Bible says, oh, how happy is that man that finds favor in God. Oh, how blessed he is and healthy. His home will have a healthy home. And he will be blessed. And his children will rise up and call him blessed and be respected because of his love. We must enjoy that time with our children, embracing them and loving them. You only have one chance in life. One chance. From 1 to 13 years old, somewhere in there to 12 years old. After that, they're pretty much making their decisions of what they're going to do. They're going to lie to you, and they're going to tell you, oh, yeah, I'm cool, I'm cool. You only have a little while to help, to nurture, to surround them, to stabilize them so that they can understand and instill your life and instill your morals in them. Otherwise, they will grow up just like you. There was a story one time. His father lost his son, lost his wife. He lost his wife, and he had a little boy. And the little boy would see the father come home drunk all the time. Drunk, drunk, falling, drunk. And the son would look at the father. He said, Papa, father, why, why? Every day you drink, why? And he would just be, and he would talk to his son. And one day they came to the father and says, come. Your son is intoxicated. He's falling all over the, the floor. He's intoxicated. And the people came and the father came and wrapped him in his arms. And said, Why? Why would you drink at your age? You're just a baby. Why would you do this? Because just like you said, Daddy, when you drink, you want to see Mama. I want to see my Mama, too. He did exactly what his father was doing, thinking that he was doing right. That's why it's important that we teach them. You think they're not looking. You think they're not understanding. But they see everything. We have one chance. And they are raised right before you. After that, those strings are cut, and no longer can you reach them. Now they're going to know how to cheat and lie because you've done it to them. And that's why we cannot ignore the godly lessons that God wants us to teach them. And knowing the word of God, teaching our children how to obey, not having a double standard. Not at home drinking and smoking and doing all these things and come to church. Hallelujah! Your children are looking at you. I may not be looking at you, but your children are looking. And they know what a hypocrite is. And they're knowing exactly where you come from. You cuss worse than a sailor. And they see that. 
No offense to the sailors, but that's an old term that they use. Your children will be in a place that they can be special and they can feel special as you teach them. It costs us. It costs us something. You don't have the freedom and think that they don't know. They don't know. They're just babies. They don't know. And pretty soon they're cussing just like you. Stop that. I'll put soap in your mouth. Why? You taught them. Why are you going to beat them? You taught them how to talk like that. They're only mimicking you. But you teach them. Then you want to beat it out of them. Who's beating it out of you? That's why it's important to invest in them. Making time to talk to them and pray with them. And we as parents can reflect the agape love of God. The security of the Lord. And the Father's love that will begin. And they will be blessed. And they will be a heritage. And the children will be upright for the glory of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 And we here at Lake Hills Christian Center want to say to all you fathers looking to the internet, God bless you. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. Be blessed. Be blessed this day. And may God bless you and your families. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Happy Father's Day, and happy Father's Day to all of you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God is good. God is good. God is good. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Father, we thank you. We bless you today, Lord. We ask that you... Watch over us and guide us. Help us to be better fathers, better stewards of your glory. And help us to reach our potential. And help us to reach our purpose. And help us to reach our calling that you've given each and every one of us. We love you in the Lord. May God bless you and watch over you in the name of Jesus. Gabriel, you want to play a song? If you need prayer, I want you to come to the front. Before we close this service, I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. I don't know where Willie's at. Thank you, Jesus.
upon you be gracious to you may the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and overshadow you may the Lord bring healing into your lives in the name of Jesus once again happy Father's Day to all the dads may God bless you and watch over you and your families in the name of Jesus go in peace and tell someone about Jesus. And remember to love one another. I love you in the Lord. God bless you. Shalom, Adam. God bless.